start to the webinar, and while we start, uh, Hayan shows on the street where Gabriel grew up, and the street is gone. Anyway, hello today is what? Um, year 2014, October 4th, Saturday, and we have our regular Saturday webinar. And we have with us, um, it's Sean, right? Uh, Gabriel, hello. Hayan, hello. Justin. Caitlin. Greetings. Hey. Infinite love. Everyone, um, good hey, evening. Right. And good night. Hello. Greetings. Uh, I don't know this Shabam. one. Shabam. Hey, Shabam. We didn't see you before. Hey, Shabam. 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 He's from India. He's been around. Shabam. All right. Mm -hmm. And France. Francine, yes. And Francine first joined us. She is so so new she didn't even know where, where in which uh, situation she comes. But uh, she is all full uh, so you're a light worker. Are you a light worker? I'm psychic and medium. Oh, here you go. So you're welcome to channel if you happen, or if you just uh, divine something while Jim channel, welcome to join uh, the conversation. Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. So, welcome, Fran Francine, and um, <coughs> I will step out to get coffee for Jim in a second, but we'll start now and you can chat. Um, today we have two questions about cancer in certain people. I guess I have to mute. Uh, just wait a second. Yes. All right. So, so Jim knows which people we are talking about. Yes. And um, oh, there is another thing to 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 mute. All right. So I just didn't have a chance to ask Jim, but we announce a discount for next week. Jim doesn't have his schedule filled up, so uh, now it will be. So it was forty-five dollars for half an hour mm -hmm. for private sessions, and now for next week until next Saturday, he will, he will offer thirty-five dollars per half an hour uh, discounts just to fill the schedule. And if you don't want the channel now, but you have the money, you're welcome to pay in advance to use that uh, discount, and then you can do the channel later. Or if you don't have the money but you expect them soon, you can do other way, other way around. You can have a channel and then pay later just to fill his schedule. But there is no freebies, uh, freebies now, but not uh, for private sessions. <laughs> and you see the face. Hello, Michael. No, Michal. Hey, Michal. Nice. Hello. To Hi. All right. Uh, now we can chat and discuss all the announcements. Uh, muting microphones when Jim channeling is absolutely necessary. Last time there was a lot of uh, interruptions because somebody's microphone wasn't muted. But we then don't hear it while we are here, while we are talking. But in the recording, uh, there was interruption. While Jim is channeling, it's better to mute. Now, please chat. I'll read the question. You can unmute yourself and just chat. Hello. How is everybody going today? We're running a little bit late, as per usual. So, and um, why don't you tell a little bit about yourself? Uh, Francine is a psychic and a medium, and tell me, tell us a little bit about you since you're here today. Of course. So I'm based here in Rochester, New York, um, and mm -hmm. they, we have meetup groups here that meet locally, and there's all different topics that you can join from. Uh, psychic work, uh, light worker work, quilting, cooking, just about any kind of group. And, and it's just a way for people to get together socially with common interests. So I have a very busy life. And I had just put on to a couple of groups uh, to see uh, what was going on in the area for classes and coursework. And I ran across this event. And it happened to fit into a time that I didn't have something scheduled. So my believing there are no coincidences, here I am. <laughs> and I didn't really know what it was about other than Jim's channeling at Max's house. That's how casually it was put onto the internet. So I've been interesting in channeling more, and I guess this is Spirit's way of answering my request. Yes. Um, 
a lot of people that are here out here from all different countries and everything, and they uh, we come together under uh, human colony because uh, the aliens have set up different colonies out there that we can start learning and, and different things, and. Um, <laughs> I can uh, uh, hide your camera if you want to eat it, if you like. No, I'm fine. Um, and so uh, we have a little bit of a different kind of setup because the people on Human Colony can talk to each other as well as us. They have their own uh, hangout area where they can talk to each other about the about different uh, medium or psychic or just personal stuff and help each other out in the day-to-day -day routines, keep their vibrations moving up. And that's what, that's what, we have several different unique things about Human Colony. First of all, it is a Human Colony space. Second of all, you guys can talk to each other and communicate with each other, not just talk to me or talk to Talk, talk to someone that's uh, charging them or whatever, but um, it's it's a really wonderful community and really great people have uh, joined us. So I'm really happy about it. So, did, would you like to give your comments about it one at a time? We basically have one hangout every day with a lot of people. For 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 month we had had every day, almost every day hangout together. Yes, uh, they announce it on Google Hangouts, and then you can get on Google Hangouts and get to the to the uh, event. But a lot of uh, a lot of the people here start the events and just have wonderful conversations and great stuff happen and a lot of knowledge. And other people are channeling now as well, so it's a wonderful thing. So anybody Which languages. Oh yes, we have uh, galactic languages that some people were have been speaking for years and did not know what they were do, talking about, and we all of a sudden they discovered that a lot of people on our site speak galactic languages. Yeah, the yeah, idea is that when people start doing the hangouts, they start speaking the languages within a week or so. Wow. It's a wonderful. So far, so far, mostly everyone speaks the language. Mm -hmm. Different languages, yes. Yes. Not just one; it's it's several. So. And uh, most languages were confirmed by independent channelers. We just find them on YouTube, speak the same language. That's, we don't understand much of it, but <coughs> but the sound is very similar. So mm -hmm. people just awaken to galactic languages: Arcturian, Luron, Pleiadian. Andromed, some Andromedans and uh, some others. Reptilian, yes. Okay. I heard that um, I would like somebody to make a request for who they want to uh, talk to today, if there's someone important they need to talk to. Um, I heard somebody say Douglas from the colony. Douglas yeah. is a human being, yeah. but channels from the colony through their uh, technology and lets us know what's happening because there's some four humans that are there a lot. Um, Someone from the Diamond Ray Consciousness. Okay, Diamond Ray Consciousness. Someone from that collective, from the original Source Collective, would be very... Okay. The universe has been talking through time lately. I've never channeled anybody from the Diamond Ray Collective. Well, I'll supply, I'll supply, I'll be the body for it, so... My body's my body's ready for it if you just want to channel the message. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Um, uh, I would we like have to... Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying that um, um, I have put a location to Kerr for other people. Okay. Yes, and I have two questions from Nitrous Pegasus for to Kerr or Lakesh if they come through as well. Okay. Yeah, I have a question from one from Norway, from someone knows about the colonies. Okay. Oh. It would be Douglas or Lakesh or Takar or. Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still recovering from waking up. For <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I would like to speak to Malkizedek. <laughs> Oh, Melchizedek. And uh, I would like to invite someone from 
Gurk Fitnir um, to discuss possible uh, communications in a wake state, like UFO mm -hmm. sightings, mm -hmm. if they can uh, show us to us in uh, in the sky, if they you know in our wake state, and we we, commu uh, we communicate to them constantly in our sleep state, altered state, meditation state, but um, I just want awake communications, and um, yeah, and um, maybe they can uh, visit us here. Maybe they can uh, take us in a wake state up there. Maybe they can um, communicate in other ways, like through computers, technology, <coughs> some sort of technological communication. They can talk about that. If you want. Okay. We have lots of requests. Aliens, and some of those I have not channeled before, so don't know if they're available. I haven't talked to them or anything. So, uh, any questions before I start? Uh, so please form your uh, your waiting line. Uh, so if you have a question, <laughs> form the waiting line is in group chat. Um, it's um, in group chat. Whatever that is a button for group chat. And those who cannot access it, I guess you have to uh, claim your interest now. So we, we just put in your in your line. So who who cannot access group chat and who wants to ask questions? Justin can't. Justin? Oh, Justin can. So okay, everybody else has access in chat, right? Those who are on the phone can't access it. I know. Yeah. <coughs> so those who access through the phone cannot. Get them to type into the. All right, that's good. I get, I get, I get them on the on the Hangout, like the actual Hangout application, the Hukulo One chat Hangout. So, so just oh, okay. Yeah, I can get to those. I can get to those messages. But. Okay. okay. All right, very good. I think we are all set. Yes. Just, just to yeah. let you know, sometimes people get uh, affected by the. When they things come in and out, so but not bad. It's but they can feel it. So yeah, if you want to exit at any time, uh, let us know. Yes, because a couple ladies get it gets too strong, and so they yeah. Have I will walk out in a few minutes, just just because I just can't stay there for a long time. I know that you're. He he moves about. Yeah. <sighs> okay. No uh, problem. Now now everybody is muted. Yeah, Gabriel is muted. So. Let me have one more sip. Thank you for coming through. Thank you. I heard many people say my name, so I yes. decided to come. I wanted to start with the questions from a couple of people about cancer. Cancer. 
Yes. So Jim saw the photograph of that lady. Her name is Carol, Carol. and she is in Australia. Do you have any comments on her? I did not study it yet, but I know that she has mastitis. Metastasis. Yes. I did not know how to pronounce it. But she does, she is in a serious way at this time. We will look into it and give it some advice for her. There may be something we can do. Right now, to pet is not available. I see. Um, the second person is Alexander. Yes. There is not much we can do, really. Thank you, but... Yes. I will give you a personal... Okay. ...interpretation later. All right. <coughs> <laughs> Uh, who goes next? The, the, uh, what, what is the waiting line? I got a question real quick. Yes. Greetings to Kerr, Gruya Kasha, JC, and Brother Robert, Nitrous Pegasus. Yes. The question from Nitrous is, dear to Kerr, you told me that I have contact with many aliens, that some tell me that it's okay to not want to be in the 3D dimension. Are they saying this out of good intentions and or for not so good reasons? You must you must second, understand. Oh, continue. Go ahead. Pardon. The second question would be oh, wait, you know, just one question at a time, Justin. One question at a time. Yes. Okay. Pardon. Many it questions. is not wrong to be in a fourth dimensional place. However, how you get there is important. If you do not ground first, then pull the energy up through the earth into the fourth dimension, then you will not be able to interpret all the messages that the fourth dimension have for you. So it is not wrong to want to be in a fourth dimension. It is just how you get there that is important. Many fourth dimensional energies and information can come to you, but you will not properly ground it or understand it or be able to bring the information to the earth if you are not grounded properly. Do you understand? Completely. I've been, I felt the assistance from the colonies during this process of becoming 4D. I understand now why you requested the 3D physicality. Because that is what you were born to. You were born to the third dimension. You must understand that first before you can possibly understand the fourth. You must understand the third before you can understand the fourth. Or continue. What is the second question? Do you know of... Alaye, the Palladian, a very loving teacher who is also a light worker and ascended master. Do you know and have any pertinent information towards these messages? Alaya is on the ship around the European continent. He will be spending some time with you in the future. But no one has been channeling much in public from that ship. But there will be some communication soon because there's been many requests for it but he is yes a teacher yes and he has come here for a specific purpose and one of them is to channel with earth <clears throat> do you have any messages for myself or anyone of the human colony that are pertinent to this now moment this now moment is a teaching moment for all of you remember to ground yourself Keep it grounded before you can reach higher. The reason for this is so that you can understand properly what is happening. If you do not properly understand, you can be misguided easily. Does that make sense to you? I'm understanding. Yes. Beginnings. If you are misguided, if you can, if they can lead you astray because of 
false understanding. This will not be good. But most, are, most of you are very high-minded as far as intent. Your intents are very high. This is good, but intent alone is not security. So please ground yourself and bring yourself. Next one was Caitlin, then Gabriel, then Sarah, and then Mikael, and then Sean. Yes, continue. Hello, Takur. Hello. Blessings to you, Caitlin. Blessings to you as well. Um, I had a question um, considering I had like I, I asked Douglas uh, about an experience I had. It was something that was just really oh it God. seemed like my body was being transported somewhere. Um, I was wondering if I could have an update on that. What what it was? Was did it have anything to do with the colonies? What is it that Douglas told you about that experience? He said it. They there hasn't been anything like they haven't been transporting people, but mm -hmm. they that is an experience that is similar to what would be or something. That's I see. But he said he would give me an update on it. So the update okay. would be with Douglas. However, I know what is going on. Yes, the tr the site to site transports have not yet begun. However. They are, there are other species working with um, moving individuals to different places. Ken Jean is working with moving people to different places, and I believe he was the one in charge of the, taking you. He has a great interest in you because of your the people that are around you. So, um, <clears throat> Probably Douglas was not aware that Ken Jean is doing this as well. But it yeah. was not the a people... site. It was not a site to site transfer, though. <clears throat> okay. So the people around me. What does that mean? I mean, you mean my you family or that are around you? You have a lot of elementals around you as well. So you you have elementals and you do have other beings. So they just watch you. They they're interested in your reaction to many things. So you understand. <laughs> Yes, um, thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is it my turn now, Caitlin? I believe it's me. Yes. Ronnie, yes. one person from Norway, wanted to ask if she's been to the colony one. Not yet, but she will be. She is someone that is of interest for that. She will be going soon. Yes. And I ha also have two questions. Uh, uh, I haven't felt anything from the colony since I've been to the crystal room. Yes, I understand. You you have been there, but you just may not have felt it. There are things going on with you that I cannot explain to you on a public site. However, you will be going back. You have gone back. You just have not remembered it at this time. Yes. I i getting a very strong confusing in my head at the moment. Is that someone trying to connect with me? It's One moment. very uncomfortable. Where is, the, where is the discomfort? In my entire head. Just ask them to leave. They will let you alone. It is no one... It is... <clears throat> It is not anyone that you know. Ask them to leave. Okay. I will do that. Thank you. This time is not for them. Who am I is next? next? I think I am. Um, hi, Chikar. Hello. 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 I have questions for Noha and um, Slava. Yes. And one for myself. Well, a statement for myself. I'd yes. like to call the my Pleiadian son uh, for Seti. F O R S E T I. F O R S E T I. Yes. 
Kuka saatahan sadien muuttuu sutimää? Vakta. Sieti ikä muuttuu. Je, ah. Continue. <coughs> yes. Okay, the question for Noha. She wanted to know how her hybrid, hybrid son and daughter Aditya and Aline are doing they are and any, any uh, developments regarding connecting to them you will be connecting to them shortly mm -hmm. they are in fine condition their parents are very happy with their advancements they're moving forward I am not sure of the word but you will be there to visit them shortly once for each and then later again this has been planned for you already mm -hmm. and she would like to know does she, do you have any messages uh, for her any developments in intuition and are you getting uh, her telepathic SMS's well messages that is yes. the children love their names the names connect them to her as mm -hmm. their mother and this brings something more personal to the relationship and when they meet them they will understand when she meets them she will understand what I am speaking of they are both moving forward in a very nice manner mm -hmm. I need to interrupt. Uh, Gabe says that he has hurt her is hurting very bad is there anything we can do now, like a blessing or something, or send someone? It's more like it's very uncomfortable at the moment. One moment, please. Let me see who it is that is bothering you. I offer <coughs> myself to these energies for Gabe. If you're open to this, I allow these energies to flow into my being. Anga hoka hoshata. Yes, as a blessing. Itata, me dig 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 dig. Thank you. Gabriel, take some deep breaths and blow out the toxins. It feels much comfortable at the moment. Yes, very good. Continue. Yes, uh, the questions for Slava. Yes. Uh, his first, he has three, and he says, his hybrid child, Avelea, can you please describe how she looks and what hybrid she is? Yes. I am and sorry. The same question for Doge as, as well, his other hybrid child, uh, Elias Shah. I am sorry I did not get back to you earlier about the children. Yes, they look very human, both of them. One is Yi Yu. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. One is a Yigil child and the other is a Pleiadian child. But they both look somewhat human. And their eyes are very large, as you requested. Not in the, the sense that they look alien, but that they look sensitive and loving. I know what you are looking for in your children. And I know and understand how much they mean to you. So they are looking and they will be exactly like you want them to be. They will be used for exactly the way you want them to be as well. <clears throat> Your intent for them is very high and I thank you for that. And we will use that intent. Mm -hmm. He also wanted to know their ages and in what constellation they are in. They are in one is in a ship, and one is in the constellation of Siri. They have been moved, but it is all right. 
Siri is a very, very high culture, very, very, very gentle and light. We felt that this would be the best place for one, and the other is in the the ships. Mm -hmm. And um, Takur, he would like you to know that he sent you a letter. Yes. On your on email to Jim. Yes. Did you receive it? Yes. And that is why I'm saying I am sorry. I have not been able to respond to it as quickly as I would have liked to. But yes, I I did receive it. Yes, he says if it is appropriate, please comment on the letter. Yes, it was a beautiful letter. And I thought that it was it was your intents for the children were wonderful. And yes, I see how you see them and it will Does he want me to comment on the other parts? On uh, no, well, if it's appropriate um, to comment on whatever it was he sent you in the letter, I will. I will send you a reply later. But I did want to comment that it was a beautiful letter, and the children. I I visualized how you wanted the children. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the last one is this week during sleep. Uh, he remembers meeting with a little girl. Mm -hmm. They were talking about something, and it seems she's saying to him, if you would know about this meeting, and who was this little girl? I believe that little girl was in a dream. It was not one of his children. It was not an entity from out of this realm. However, there was a message attached to it from spirit. And it was to to let him know that everything was going to be all right and that the innocence of a child is how the innocence would be when he arrives in one of their locations. He will feel that innocence pouring from him and to him. Thank you. Mm. Any more questions? It was Mikal next. Yes. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. I would like to ask, uh, first of all, much love to you all. Uh, much love. Normal stay. Normal stay. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, how do you count time? Uh, do you have a universal uh, time for for this year, or do each race count time in their own way? Okay. Our perception of time is slightly different than yours. We can actually control where we want to be at whatever time that we need to be through different dimensional portals. Not only that, but we can. It, it depends on the question. If, are you talking about for us personally or for our ships? Because they have a different time as well. We can fold space and time and move hundreds of thousands of years into one or two hours. So time does not exist the way you see it in that realm. Do you understand? <clears throat> Not quite. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Yeah. So there is no universal uh, linear uh, time. They are of one. They are a fabric that work together. Time and space can be folded from one point to another. So that at this point, it is one point in time. And at the other edge of it, it's another point in time. Which may be very different than the original. Do you understand? It is very, it's a very difficult thing to describe without using scientific terms. Excuse me, are they simultaneous? Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. But they move as one, you can move them as one because as you move from this place to this place by folding the fabric of time and space, it will appear that you are many, many 
millions of miles from your original destination, which with a ship would have taken many millions of years or thousands of years, and then it only takes maybe an hour or two. Okay, thank you. Did you have a question? No, sorry, excuse me. No, it's okay. Did that answer your question? That is one kind. Are the, the time that we live in, we manipulate. You, we can manipulate time and space. You are dragged along by it. We put it right equal with us so that we can do the things that we need to do when we need to do them. You are dragged along by time and space because you do not know how to manipulate it. Do you understand that? Yes. Yes, thank you. I, that is the best way for me to describe it. <clears throat> it is different, yes. Thank you for this message. And it's not measured in the way that you measure it. It is measured in what has been accomplished in what period of time. So, so if, if there is something that you need to change in the past, you go to the past? Wouldn't that affect everything? We can go to the past and future, but not to the distant past or the distant future. It is not permitted. Only a very short period of time in the past can be uh, assigned. And only a short time in the future can be assigned to your daily prospectives. It is very difficult for you to understand because you cannot see time the way we do and space. So it is a different, difficult concept. But with your telepathy, when you become telepathic, when this species has evolved to its next level, you will be getting an inkling of how time and space works because you will notice it between yourselves. As you communicate telepathically, there will be an understanding of how things move without being seen. And that will give you an inkling of how the universe works with time and space. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again. You are welcome. Continue. Who's next? Max, you can ask my question. I'm willing to wait. Uh, to you ask your questions from the other people. It was Sean next. Sean, continue. And then Sabrina. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Max had uh, questions from other people, and uh, I'm willing to wait. All right, thank you. I will do that. Okay, um, Terry, um, you know Terry, right? I sent you a photograph of Terry from Australia. Yeah. A young girl. Yes. All right, she asks, Hi, Max. Can you please ask a question that occurred? I would like to know about my DNA inheritance, percentage of alien. Uh, this would be very, my first question. So very excited to know what's running through my veins. Terry, do you know what portion? Oh, yes. I, 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 I am understanding, yes. One moment, please. Waka. Ikora Hajalba. It would appear that you have some Pleiadian running in you, about 3.5 percent. Continue. All right. Um, Liney, you know Liney, right? Caroline. Yes. Um, she says, would be grateful. Um, first, my new hybrid girl in incubation, I want to name her Freya, pronounced like F R, okay, it's spelled F R E J A, pronunciation Freya or Freya. Freya. Yes. I will pass that along for you. Thank you. Guahata Thank you. Second, what 
was happening Thursday night in my belly or was it to do with taking DNA? One moment. Oh, you were feeling a a psychic connection between the unborn child and yourself. It was not taking of DNA. We have enough DNA of yours that it, you have five or six, five hybrid children, so we do have your DNA on file. However, you were feeling a psychic connection, and that will continue to happen. Do you understand? Uh, she's not online, but thank you. Yes, it makes sense. Can I go with the next question? Yes. All right. Nitrous Pegasus is asking, is there any alien species which would look like a raccoon, uh, two-legged, uh, you know, up, up, upright standing raccoon? Yes. There is a species that is not around Earth at this time. How did you see them? I don't have an answer. I, see. I This is JC. I informed Brother Robert Nitrous Pegasus of my interaction with Bashar when he channeled Willa Hilla Crissing. And I had a conversation where I offered my light code DNA for hers to create a new being so as to understand the dimension, parallel dimensions and realities. This being, however, that he speaks of is an actual race, a species, that is not around Earth at this time, but are interested in coming sometime in the future, perhaps 50 years from now, because they know that we are not cracking human evolution in a way that is interesting to them yet. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Good. But they will be here. They are called the Leandians. All right. Do you remember Steve? Yes, Steve. All right. He asks about, in writing, about his hybrid child. Yes. What would you like to know? Uh, he didn't comment, but I guess how is his health uh, side? Doing well. Mm -hmm. He is doing well, yes. It's a male child. Uh -huh. It is doing well. It is in a colony. Areas, but not in the colony. But there is an area on the ship close to the colonies that are... Colony one, I got that wrong. One moment. There's an area close to colony one on the ship that your son is there, and he is doing very well. He is growing quickly. What would be the correspondence to Earth age? Probably 1.5, 1.5 years old. Okay. Thank you. I'm done with questions from others. Uh, Sean was next, I guess. Can I make a quick request? Yes. yes. Uh, right now I feel better, but it's very confusing while I'm channeling. Could someone help me with that? Someone I, like Fisher. Jim has Fisher. Oh, Fission, yes. Just a moment, please. <laughs> One moment. He will be sending you some healing energy. One second. One moment. One moment. Eri apoa sa shoto avala. Eri konda ushapatits at gimbia boko. You should feel some relief momentarily. If you do not, let me know. 
who is next? May I ask a question, please? Because Sean. my connection is. Now I may ask the question. Oh, how many? Now I may ask the question because she can get to off that under time. Uh, I, uh, who is speaking now? No, No. Yes. Hello, to Kern. Hello, Max, and everybody. Actually, my my connection is good, but I'm trying to come through quickly. Uh, Tikar, I've been sending you so many uh, telepathic uh, messages. Do you get them? I get some of them. I do not get all of them, but I do get some of them. I just know I've been inquiring about my telepathy is getting better and my psychic abilities are are they getting better? Uh, what's in store for me in that case? Yes, I believe they are getting better, but there is some interference with some atmospheric things when you're just sending them without technology. However, you are getting stronger and you are visiting the Colony One for telepathic growth. I received them as questions. Is that correct? You were asking how you were doing. Question how for question. Yes. Continue. I'm asking questions and requests all the time to enhance myself. Yes. I have been sending answers. Have you been receiving them? Mm, not really clearly. Okay. I need help with that, please. please. Ah, I see. Do not, be a, do not be worried. You are doing fine. Things are getting stronger, and you will be able to enhance yourself in many ways. At the colonies, we do help you with that. So, and well, we do understand where you are coming from and why you are asking. So, I need Fisher to help me in my area of also, you know, oh, yes. Yes. in my area for the you know, social regulations in our area. See what I mean? Yeah. Thank you very are much, you, and well appreciate. Are you even permitted to have a connection here today? I just happened by chance. Today just happened. It is a miracle. Ah, I see. Understood. I will work on that for you. Well, appreciate it. I love you. Love you too. Namaste. How do you feel? How does Jim's body feel? He is okay. Thank you. Uh, Sean is next. Sean. Hello, Tucker. Much love. Hello, Sean. How are you? I am fine. I am just curious to know how my grounding is going. Where what? My grounding. Oh, yes. Just a moment. It is better than it was, yes. Continue to, to ground. You are actually very close so that you may pull up through the energy. Remember to, whenever that you are grounding, to take walks. You have been doing that. You have been out in nature, correct? Yes. Yes, I thought so. And you have been connecting to nature, and this is a great thing for you, because um, you, you tend to have a very fourth dimensional outlook. So. Just remember that the third dimension, the third dimension is where you were born into. You must understand it. And there are some things about the third dimension that are difficult for you to understand. However, you are doing very well. Thank you, Tukar. Much love. Continue to work in that direction. You are well loved as well. Thank you for all your messages that you send. Thank you for the responses, even though it's hard to understand. Thank you. You're welcome. It will be easier in the future. Next is Sabrina. Sabrina, how are you? Fine. How are you, Tucker? I am well. Good. Um, my question is, in um, Pisco Valley in Peru, yeah. um, there are these... Um, thousands of holes, I think it's like 2,500 holes that have been uh, carved there. 
Yes. Um, Thank you for all your messages was, that you sent. I was Thank you for the responses. Even though it's hard to understand. Thank you. It will be easier in the future. Hi, Mila. You're a Rita. How are you? Hi, how are you? I am well. We can't mute her. Um, my question is in uh, Pisco Valley in Peru. Yeah. Um, there are these. Arlinga, uh, can you turn off your mute, please? You need to find hundred things. Some hard data. The important plane in Sabrina's browser. That's what it is. Uh, no, no. It's the Angela per. It's not me. I can't mute. I will mute her completely then. Tuata shakaroto ukala tiyeti mundia sa eriantongua. Continue, Sabrina. Uh, it's fixed now. Okay. Um. So. Valley, yes, with the holes. Yes. So I was wondering what civilization made them, and and if you can tell us um, what was it used for? What what was the purpose of the holes? The purpose of the holes was each hole had a crystal within it, and each crystal had um, technology attached to it. It was for communication, transmitting, and transporting, and receiving. Okay. They do multiple transports at once. But all the technology and crystals have been removed. Okay. And and what civilization was that? That was Fendorian. Oh. Oh. They okay. had a brief visit here on your planet. Okay. And would the, the, the drawings also have been made by them or was that a different civilization? That was the people that were in the area at the time that saw them. Oh, okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Sister DeKerr, were they related to the red-headed giants, um, the Peruvians, the Peruvian culture? They knew of them and they were attached in bonds of understanding, but not physiologically. Also, another question. I've been feeling many new um, integrations of DNA, um, as well as visits from the Diamond Consciousness Collective and all the Ascended Masters. Yes. Changing your DNA is part of what alien contact does. However, yours changes much quicker because yes. our the 12 in strands. Could you inform about the 12 strands? Yeah. and the diamonds interlaced between them? The reason for this is that you have so much contact that they needed to change the strands to help you not be harmed. So the process that I've been experiencing just allow it fully. Yes. And also there is many other reasons for the increase of DNA strands. But I cannot go into that at this time. But you know of many of them. Yes. Thank you for this message. I must go now. Thank you, Takur. Uh, can you give us a blessing? Giga Vasha. Otaka Motari Yarata Sopoti. And the Kankra Koshofilm Wata Botu. Ungo hati higra kanta, sora o pota tika nikodo, ora komboski kge ora rajinida. Continue to grow, continue to let the light seep into you, and let it awaken all the things within you that are for the present. The future is to behold, and you will behold it in its own time. Let the light of understanding and spirit fill you with the wisdom to move in a way 
that you must move to carry out the purpose of your perfect life. Hold on to those things that resonate well with you. Do not ever let them go. And gain those that resonate with you and build a world, a city within you, an understanding of spirit that has not been seen on your planet as this date. Much love to you and much gratefulness to you that you have connected yourself with spirit and with positivity. Much love to Kurt. Thank you very much. Yeah. Namaste. Namaste. Oh, hello. Hey, Jim. How are you? Hi, Jim. How hey. are you? Welcome back, Jim. Welcome back. Mm. Thank you, thank you. <coughs> if you need a drink or anything, just let, push oh, us aside. Or... I brought some water. Okay, very good. So, tea. Okay, thank you. <laughs> hello. Oh. Uh, come on. All right. Oh, what do you do next? I don't know. Is there any anybody that really needs to talk to anyone next? How is everybody? What's new? Okay. Do you have any questions? No, I'm good. Okay, good. Are you? No. Good. No, I I actually was watching the um the. Cusco, Peru, the drawings and all of that, and I became very curious, you know, I was... Um, yeah, um, what did they say they were? Um, the halls, I guess they were a form of communications, there were some crystals there, um, because they, um, the, the speculation was that, that it was a form of communication, so I got curious, I was like, oh, I can ask to Kerr. <laughs> Oh, the, they speculated that it was a form of communication? Yeah. Oh. So. I never heard of them before. <laughs> I just want to ask, do you call uh, of all, some of them. Yes. I hear bits and pieces. They want me to hear something more. I, sometimes they use my words and then they'll totally hone in and there's a word I'm looking for, and I'll put my mind and find it. So, um, you don't have to... You're getting feedback from somebody. Can you please mute yourself? Somebody's playing the video. It was Kim. Oh, hi, Kim. Yeah, it was so fun it, last time Douglas came to me. So, came any like... questions? Oh, go ahead, Gabriel. Sorry. Last time Douglas came in, he went like, "Oh, it's hello, it's James." Oh no, it's not James. It's Douglas. I was just speaking to James. <laughs> <laughs> it's like telepathically, you forget who you are. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. The o the Kim, only other. You need ahead, to be Jim. muted, Kim, if you don't speak. Okay. Questions. <laughs> Jim, Barbara here. Hi, Barbara. Hi. My question is for Barbara Glenn. Okay. She's seen a lot of people and a lot of aliens on her property and in her house. Is she seeing fourth dimensional beings? Okay. Um, I'll have to ask one of the uh, aliens that because I have no idea. I should have asked when Takara was on. Yeah, so, sorry about that. I have no idea. <laughs> I can't connect to that. So, but uh, yes, I would imagine. Uh, I want to ask that question if somebody else comes through. Sure, you can ask anyone. They would probably know better than the I. Would. The simple answer that's help. coming to me is yes. The simple, like simple answer to start from is yes. 
Yeah, I believe that most of the uh, aliens have reached fourth dimensional and do use fourth dimensional uh, transportations and things of that nature. So just on a logical sort of understanding, I would probably say if there's a lot of aliens, definitely some of them have to be fourth dimensional. Some yeah. of them definitely do. Car did say at one time she's like in between third and fourth dimension. Who was? My friend Barbara Glenn. Okay. Yes. You know Barbara? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I know Barbara, yes. And yes, it is possible to be between fourth, third and fourth dimension. And yeah. that's what uh, I think they talked about that even earlier today. Uh, some people moving from the third dimension to the fourth dimension. That's what it was. Jim, um, the other question that. I had and I, I'm not I'm a little confused about now it's about the higher self yes um, and it's the higher self um, like I don't know I thought that the higher self was energy that never incarnated actually you have a higher self that is actually someone that's in spirit that's been around for a long long time and knows a lot of things and they're just they're sort of who the spirit guides go to to ask questions sometimes but they also have an effect on on some of your decisions as well they're there for a reason they're there for your higher uh, vibrations and your higher resonations because that's uh, if you let me give you an example if you're a musician Chances are your higher self is probably a musician as well. If you're an artist, chances are your higher self has some workings in the artistic field. If your highest uh, resonation is um, science, perhaps there's some that person is probably a little scientific in some ways. Uh, because they have to know about the human that they're taking care of. And they... Uh, it's a very interesting process. I don't know how they select them, but it, it, it really oh, so is. The highest, so Can the we, yeah. yeah. So the higher self, I thought it was part part of you that just remained uh, non incarnate. It's non incarnate, and yes, in some ways that you are correct because what I was saying is whatever the, your highest resonation is, so that is of the highest self of, as okay. well. Okay, so, so then... So they, it is, they have incarnated in you in some ways because of your resonation. Do you understand? So oh. part of that is true. The other part is that they are someone that is a guide as well because they have to be to... To answer questions of the uh, the spirit guides because with that particular vocation that they have they are incarnate with you they still have uh, the spirit guides that have mind body spirit soul and all that stuff so they all pull through and work together okay so so the would the breakdown then be the oversoul, then then the higher self, and yeah, then oversoul, and then you? Yes, oversoul is a collective. Right. An oversoul is a collective of souls that is very high, and you all become as you pass out of this life, you become part of the oversoul, and it can and you can be part of it, or you can move away from it, but. In most cases, it's a very big collective, and you can choose to stay with it or move away from it as you choose to learn different things in the spiritual world. Um, Jim, there are um, my, also for my, sorry, Max. May I just elaborate a little bit on just a brief sure. question? I think it's a very good question. Um, I, I think uh, sometimes it's just the names. Um, you know, we have collective consciousness, we have oversoul. Um, I think people are looking in different directions um, and they're just under a different banner, a different name. But I think the purpose is the same. So 
I think that can be confusing sometimes. Oh, yeah, but I understand what you're saying. A lot, of yeah. it, a lot of people describe it differently, um, but it's the same thing. Mm. This is the way it was brought by the aliens, because I learned it a while back, and because uh, I asked them several times about it. And this is how they described it to me. So that's just one mm. way of describing it. It can be described in many other ways. It can be used in many other terms. But the... Uh, yes. But yes, that, thank you for that because there there is confusion. They should make it all just one under one banner of understanding. Mm. One yes. Of, but people describe things differently. Aliens describe things differently as well. The way they mm -hmm. might be slightly different, or you know, um, it's very similar but very different at times. So um, Bashar defined it uh, in an interesting way: um, higher self. So uh, he said, you have multiple incarnations, and you go, um, which exist simultaneously, but you have an experience of them being in a certain sequence. So you draw more from the past incarnations and much less from the future incarnations. And at some point, you become this uh, being, which is you know, the incarnation which is most expansive, most developed. And after that, you stopped incarnating altogether. You move move uh, to the uh, all uh, next level altogether. So that being before moving to the next level all, altogether, before leaving this um, overall reality to, to some next level, is most knowledgeable about all past lives. It has for, for that being all lives are past lives for him or for it, and and that's where that being is serves as a higher self to the past lives. So it kind of has all the perspective, all the benefits, it learned know everything. So from that perspective, it's still you, but and it knows all your lives. And from that perspective, it kind of guides you through your incarnation. And, and then we discussed, I discussed much in the books, how does it guide? But you know, it, it's a daily interaction. This higher self daily interacts with us. Not all the time. It's its focus of attention is not all the day through, but you know, when I spoke to my higher self, it was a couple hours per day. Uh, there is a upload, download, and interaction, very active interaction. And my higher self much uh, uh, enforced the idea that meditations are really nice, much like the ideas of meditations. That's where uh, the communication is beneficial for me. It's also beneficial, as I understand, for, for him. Then uh, the oversouls are of different levels. It's like a big tree with branches, and it branches and branches. So there is some oversoul here, but then the whole global oversoul, and there is all human oversoul, all humans around the galaxy, and, and so on. So there are multiple oversouls of different levels. That's what I wanted to comment. But again, the language we have is limited, because there is a complexity which some of this we can understand, and some of this we just cannot. It's just beyond that reality. Right. The the levels of oversouls are you can stick with the original oversoul or you can move into different areas uh, with different oversouls. Yes, that's true. Because there's different things being taught and, and received in the different levels. So if you're learning many, many things and you're uh, planning things and doing and so where you end up in the oversouls levels is up to you in many ways. So there are soul groups, and uh, possibly many of us are from the same soul group. That would be interesting to find. Yeah, out. who knows? <laughs> uh, somebody would comment on it. That does anybody know? <laughs> does anybody know if we're from the same soul group? Uh, um, maybe the Temptations or the Diana Ross and the Supremes. <laughs> I don't understand. groups from the past. Yeah. You are connected to Anubis? Anubis, yes. Oh, that would be nice to invite Anubis to the to, to channel as well. I've been getting a lot of, a lot when, of when, Osiris coming through lately. Osiris has been coming through. I read the Emerald Tablets recently. And I've been spending like days and days. It feels it actually feels like an eternity in the halls of Amenti, 
lately. Wow. Just the most beautiful. Um, I've been able to talk with Thoth. I've been able to talk with Ra, Newt, um, Osiris, Anubis. Just the whole pantheon of them, as well as the Nordic gods, are, and then the the um, the Greek myth mythology, and the Peruvian. A lot of these different um, spirit, these cultures or spirits, have been coming to me and uh, assisting me lately. I feel like I'm in like this protective cocoon lately, and everything is starting to flow through me, and I'm starting to absorb the fourth dimensional energies out of the third, and you're pulling gradually shifting into that comfortable zone, if you will. Okay. Who was it? Yeah, yeah. well, I, I think I've been yeah, flying now. spacecraft tonight. Okay. Who, <laughs> who was speaking? Oh, oh, it was me. Jim, we've right. never spoken with the uh, the Sasani that you have channeled? Shell. Ostrakhani? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I I spoke to Shell. Shell has actually become a a, a little more popular with uh, private channeling people. Um, people have been asking for him. Yeah, we never. I, I mean, it would be nice if he would just do like a little, a little short lecture for us on something. You on know, something, something for us to learn, sure, isn't he? <laughs> yes. I was. The next thing that's coming through is the Diamond Ray Collective, I think, somebody from there. But, uh, JC, uh, they said you have the, you'll do the channeling and I will interpret it. Does that make sense? Okay. Just for a short while, they want to say something and you have the, met you have the words and I have, they'll give me the the I feel I feel it in my heart, but I mean, man, it's man. I'll say it. I mean, I'm that I'm that open and allowance to it. I'll say it. I will. I really will. But I need someone to like at least just say, just just do it. <laughs> okay. You're, yeah. Go ahead. Whatever it is. I'm not sure exactly how they how they work. I've never uh, channeled. <laughs> They're saying, let me see if I can interpret it exactly what they said. Be aware of this now. This now is perfect. Blast yourself out of this now to the future because this is going to represent you in time. You are physical now, but someday spiritual. And you are spiritual now and someday less. But right now the light is present and you must understand light and how it moves and what it means and how full it is for your lives. And make your nows filled with light. Be aware, be aware, be aware of the now. There's more to it, and I, I can't get it. There's a little bit more. The Christ has been reborn in the diamond, the diamond ray consciousness, the 12-strand one, the 12-stranded diamond. All right. We are here. We will be many. There is not only one embodiment of pure source. Correct. This fractal of source is true name 
is J.C. Raelga. J.C. Raelia. J.C. Raelia. We have witnessed and put to death our aspect, the idea that is J.C. Barra. We traded our feelings, our experiences from this now and every knowledge of all past lives for the experience of the understanding of what it is to be a fourth dimensional being, an alpha and omega fractal in its purest form and the purest of allowances. This is simply what each of our purposes are, to live in pure allowance of, a, of ourselves and our infinite universal aspects upon Gaia, as well as our infinite universal aspects. We are the aliens. We are the past. We are the future, meaning this is the now, the perfect now. Allow it. Flow with it. Do whatever you have to do to do this. There is not much time for this. We feel the light. Live in the light. Live in the shadow. However, when you realize the shadow is no longer beneficial to the self or other selves, when the intent is pure, this alone purifies the shadows to the light and brings light to the shadows, shadows to the light. Be the shadow, be the light, to become the singularity that it is to be your truest self. Welcome it, allow it, touch it, feel it, taste it, smell it. That's what your individual idea of your higher self, your higher power, is begging for, yearning for, craving for. Trade these experiences for the experience of being your own version of source, whatever that is, in this now moment. I choose to be the most infinite universal aspect in whatever that is in its flowing manner. Very good, cool. Any questions? This is an invitation and an opening and the gentle to the strongest allowances to ourselves as a gift to our universal aspects throughout the universe and embodied on our physical realm. Infinite blessings. Very good. Any questions? I think we'll uh, I'll try to channel someone else and what time is it? What time is it by the way? Uh, the perfect time. It's the perfect time. <laughs> it's the now. I, I do not see I wanna in, I look at when I look at the time, I don't even equate it with anything other than source is talking to me. There, you know? Yeah. Just hey, what's up, source? What number do you have for me right now? And I add them together. Oh, okay. Five. All right. So this is a five now moment. All right, whatever that means, go on with it. I don't even look at time the same anymore. Yeah, and you shouldn't either, really. We there's no reason. We have to live, have to live within a culture of that uh, puts a lot of uh a, a lot of uh, importance. importance on time and they're, and they're making things at this date and that time and everything. And we have that to work with, but it's not the uh, purest form of use. So. <laughs> All right, I'm going to bring somebody else. We'll see who else comes. Any Thank you guys so much. That, that felt amazing. Thank oh. you. Oh, you're welcome, Jake. Have a great day. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Have a great. Well, I'll be talking to you again. Oh, what is that thing called? It's called rain stick. A rain it's stick. Rain outside, so there is no reason to invite more rain. But uh, <laughs> rain stick, and uh, 
uh, drum. Let me see what I got. Tank drum. Hello. Hello. I am Buddha. Buddha, thank you. Welcome. Uh, thank yes. you for coming through. Hello, Buddha. Thank you for coming. Last time I was Hello, here. Buddha. Hello. Hello. Last time I was here, I spoke to you about the heart chakra. And I want you to remember all the things about the heart chakra because it is the center chakra. It is a, an important chakra for many, many reasons, as you know. It, it is the chakra of love. It is the chakra of health for many, many people. It is the chakra that brings to you telepathy. It, but now, we'll speak about the fifth. The throat chakra, the chakra of communication, the chakra of peace and understanding, the blue chakra. There is so much to learn about the chakras in the body and how they come together and make one full body, one full colorful rainbow of sensibilities and senses and understandings and of past lives. You understand that all the chakras hold your past lives within them and you bring things into each chakra that have meant so much to you in your past that you must bring them along to this life so that they may help you to understand how to move forward and to gain the knowledge, understanding and teachings of this world. The blue chakra, the communication chakra is so important because many of you refuse to speak. When there are times that you could speak and you feel it coming up within you that there is something to say, but yet you do not speak it. Why? It is resonating with you to speak, and yet you cut yourself off. The communication chakra is for the positive growth of mankind. It is for the positive growth one-on-one. -on -one. Those things that you intend to speak forth that are good for others to hear. I am not talking about gossip. I'm not talking about those things that lack spiritual dimension. Although we speak them constantly in spirit and in human form. Speaking of things that make little difference is something that we do. However, when you intend yourself to be speaking to a group or speaking into another person's life,
or going to places where there will be many people. Make sure you pray that your blue communication chakra is open to be saying the things that are needing to be heard by not only one, but many. Now you may say to yourself, or ask me, how do I know if what I am going to speak is actually the truth? You will know by your resonation. You will know by the questions in your heart and in their heart. And you will know by when the words come out, if they resonate as true for you as they do for the one listening, or those listening. Because you will see the expression on those faces. If you are speaking to a group, you will see their faces. You will know what they are experiencing in many senses. You will see either questions on their face, or you will see joy on their face, or you will see understanding. You will know these looks by just gazing at them. Do you understand these things? Yes. Your knowledge of others is incredible. And your communication to others is incredible. Now, I have something else to tell you about that chakra. Many times people move up in their chakras, the, blue, the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, and they stop at the blue. Why? Why is it so difficult to get to the higher levels of understanding because you stop at the blue? Because you do not question, you do not speak that which is resonating within you, you let things with your families especially build up. You want to say something, but you don't say it, and you press it down, you press it down, you press it down. You cannot do that. You must find the moments, the understandings, in which to communicate the things that need to come out the truths that you need to speak to one another. It is not that you are defiling one another with the truth. You do not defile one another with the truth. You enhance one another with the truth. If it is in love, if you speak out of hatred, yes, it will defile. But no, it will not defile if it is spoken from the love that you have for this person. And you must speak that intent. My love for you is wonderful. You are a perfect and true, wonderful human being, but I must speak something from my heart. It could be that you haven't said, I love you enough. Or it could be that there is something they are doing to harm themselves, and you haven't spoken it to them. It could be that there is a message from spirit that you need to speak and you keep it down. Let your blue chakra shine. Let it resonate that you can speak as well as anyone else. Do not push down communication. Do not push it down. Let it come in love. Let it come in understanding of the truth. Let it come for the ways and understanding to others. Many of you stop here because you cannot bring yourself to the courage of spoken word which is out of, even out of love. You feel that it might be harmful. You think that it might hurt someone. But if you speak it out of love and tell them, you have your own faults. You have your own things that they should be speaking to you. They should be speaking to you as well.
It is not that you should always be speaking to them, but they should be speaking to you as well. Communication. This is helpful for the heart chakra, for the telepathy to bring forth. If you cannot communicate here, but you can communicate here, this can be enlightened by better communication here. Do you understand? Coming out yes. here. Yes. <laughs> Let this light burn into this light. Come out of here and fill all the other chakras that we've spoken about so far. Plus, it does affect the third eye and the crown, which we will get to one day. But what I want to tell you now is that communication, the love of giving the truth, letting the spirit speak, letting the heart speak, letting the brain understand the purposes of the voice. Without a voice, if, if you had nothing to say, if you're... If you had no nothing to give to the world, you wouldn't have a voice. You wouldn't have that voice. It would be taken away. It would be taken away and all you would have is telepathy. But telepathy is wonderful too. But still in telepathy, you can keep things from others. That throat chakra is important. That throat chakra also has other meanings. The blue, peace, peacefulness, tranquility. When you speak, you should not be speaking to cause turmoil in any way. It should come out. If you understand the, the meaning of, of this blue color, this blue chakra, it is peaceful. It is understanding. It is calming. Ah, yes. There are times for excitement and speaking of happiness and joy and bursting forth with expletives and happiness. But when you are speaking out of wisdom from the heart, this is the filter of peace. The filter of love and understanding, of calm, of presence, of spirit. Do you understand? It is part of who you are to communicate with love and understanding, like I am trying to do with you right now. Speaking with love and calmness, but yet fully understanding that there's a lesson to be learned and things within you that you do not understand. Oh yes, I will be patient, but I will be calm. I will be tranquil and loving. Let this be your wisdom as you speak. Let it come out in the way that they will understand as beneficial benefit them benefit yourself because if you are harsh in your words they will hear that you may, may not you may not hear yourself I would say in your modern day and age you should connect something to yourself that records how you speak to others because when you listen to it back you're going to be amazed at how harsh you sound at times. You're going to be amazed at how harsh you sound at times. You will be amazed. And then you will be going, oh my goodness. I need to bring tranquility to my voice at these times. when, Especially those times when you meant something very loving and good and it came out Differently. Differently. Not as you wanted it to at all. And they heard differently. Much love. 
is to be given with the Lord. Let us listen to our own voices and perhaps learn how to speak to ourselves as lovingly as we want to speak to others. Because there are things, darknesses and shadows, there are things that are third dimensional. It is not a fault of your own. You were born into this dimension and there are people all around you that give you their version of this third dimension. Do you understand that? Their version of third dimension may not be the same as yours, but yet you can bring tranquility and love, and calmness, peace to the world. Not that other things are not valuable, but there is not enough peace on the world. Not enough peace in the world. Not enough tranquility in the world. You hear all these people say, Oh, they're so nice. They're so sweet. They're so good. I can't stand having all that around me all the time. Do you know why? It's not natural in the third dimension to be peaceful, quiet, tranquil, loving. It is much easier to move along with your peers and do exactly what they do. But do you know what? Do you know what? Your inner peace is important. Yes, your inner peace guides your life. If there's no inner peace, you are in chaos with the world. You are moving in the world in a way that is like a pinball machine, just bumping off of things and rattling through and rolling around. You are not purposeful. Bring yourself to a, a peaceful inward understanding. And then you can do anything you want. You can be rockets. You can be hilarious. You could be anything. But remember, the spirit is important. Be who you are in your perfect self. But remember, do not, do not forget the calm. Do not forget the wisdom. Do not forget the communication that can be so important to your friends, the world, and even to yourself. Because when you're speaking those words of Windism, you are also hearing them and making them greater within you. I ramble on, but I do not want to. I believe you understand where I'm coming from at this time. I think it was very logically built. Uh, you spoke about communication and then about peace. I think both messages are very well connected. Yes, especially bringing your inner peace to the words that you speak. Connect those feelings to your communication, they will not be misunderstood that way. They will not be misunderstood. You, many times on your third dimension, the things that you say are misunderstood. Don't misunderstand what others are saying to you and bring it through clearly in peace and love. If there is a question, I have one or two minutes. Yes, please. Uh, this is Noha Buddha. Good to have you here. Hello. Um, I'm asking, uh, actually, my throat felt much better when you spoke about the third chakra. Uh, and throat chakra, rather. Uh, my question is about the, it's not about the throat chakra, it's about Om, the word Om. Om. Om what does it mean, really? It has so many meanings in the in the internet. It has so many interpretations. It has uh, the it means the universal universal sound, and also it means God. So what is it exactly? It's a connection. You see, we connect by sound. I speak communication by sound, and the Om is a sound, is it not? It brings 
everyone into the same vibration as the Om. The Om is a vibration, a sound that connects us all together and brings down God because God is part of that connection, brings everyone into a similar telepathic state of mind in some ways. You may not be thinking the same things, but you are connected in mind, body, and spirit by the sound of Om. It relaxes and it brings forth those things of the spirit because when you're all connected by one thing, one sound, one vibration, is it not a great thing to share? within yourselves. It brings likeness to those that are not like each other. It brings a sense of unity to the group and purpose in many ways. You understand? Yes. Is that the explanation yes. that you find? I find it, uh, it, makes, uh, it resonates with me. Thank you very much. Much love to you. Much love to you. I have another question which just popped out of my mind. Have you ever thought about reincarnation? I have done so, but I am not oh, yeah. doing so at this moment. Aha, uh -huh. okay, great. Brother Buddha, yeah. who kua in me in the strongest allowances in this now moment? Be well. I allow you fully into my being so as to reincarnate into this now moment. Thank you. In my perspective, in my fractal. Be the vibration of all that is. What sound will connect me with your vibration? Yes. What? Do you have any more questions? Come again and answer more questions on previous chakras and uh, all together. I will leave you now then. Thank you. Much Thank you. love to you and much good communication. <laughs> For I love you and the words come from beyond the throat into your reality. And if they mean anything, if they mean anything, you will feel them in a way that resonates with you in an entire chakra way. Do you understand? Because love yeah. is part of all the chakras, not just one. This is the one that speaks it. And that is a beautiful thing. Yes. Much love Much love. Much Namaste. love. Come back soon, please. Oh, hello. Hey, Jim. Welcome back. Thank you. Francine, how are you? I'm doing well. Welcome back. Uh, no, no, not at this time. I was. It was made clear to me I'm here as an observer and okay. Oh, okay. participant on that part. So nice. Wow. It's, nice it's, it's nice to have you. It's a nice introduction. Thanks. Um, nice to have two people around Jim, so he has uh, more balance in yeah, the yeah. Yeah. He's a donor of energy. Today. Thank you. I feel, feel like I've seen her before, someplace, somehow. Oh, in a dream? interesting. Why? He's in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't been there yet. <laughs> it's on the list. Oh, very good. Well, I don't have. If you have any questions for me, go ahead. Uh, or, or for Francine, right? Yes. Or for Max. So that was a question from Gabriel. Uh, what is grounding? And Buddha sort of didn't didn't want to stay longer, but you can answer. Francine, can you answer what is grounding? Uh, from that first entity that came through, he had made it clear. Uh, how, that, yeah, that was a female. It was a female. Karma. 
to a lure cur- female. To curse beasts. It's, she's a Lyran female. She's uh, eight foot, seven foot tall, and she's big. And she has a lowest voice that I channel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, she made it clear how important grounding was, and it was interesting when Buddha then addressed it. How we were ping pong. He made that analogy, that that metaphor of a ping pong bouncing all over. I, I think it was Buddha that had said that. Uh-huh. Um, and the grounding does serve the purpose so that you can be more aligned uh, for the energy and to take it in and uh, absorb it and get it out as well. So I was making sure that to aid Jim, that I w- and myself first, of course, uh, that I was grounded to uh, Mother Earth so that I could give my energy to him and not have it be scattered to affect it all. It just helps the transmission more. What uh, tools do you use to ground? Do you use tools? I use a lot of visual um, and, my, and my guides and it just seems like I it comes in quickly for me. So you use I know to do it first and foremost before I connect it all. With, with energy and I just feel it open right up so mm-hmm. I am a big nature lover someone had mentioned that as well mm-hmm. telling one of the participants you are going out in nature I know that I know I'm drawn to nature I, I seem to feed off of it so it, yeah. it just strengthens that for me and it's very easy for me to ground myself so when you're in the nature how do you ground yourself um, it's not a ceremony by any means. I don't want to put that across. Uh-huh. Um, I just feel that I resonate Connect. with the vibration. Because you don't do anything special. Everything it's, all very, it's all very visual. I always really take a moment at some spot and pause and uh-huh. uh, maybe say a, a blessing. But it's very quickly to connect my chakras, clear them out, absorb through right through my feet, run up and... I, it's very clear that you are grounded and move yes. up through the third dimension. I, go, I go right up. I was surprised. Buddha said people stop here. I thought, really? How can they? Okay. But for me, it goes right up, and it seems mm-hmm. like there's more chakras than what people usually address. Oh, yes. Above the... So it's energetic. You don't even use words. But visual, what do you visually... I, I, I can do a visual if I'd like. What is, but, it? What is it? What do you do? Um... I can go through the colors if I'd like, uh-huh. um, but more of it is an energy vibration. So I can, mm-hmm. they actually mingle from above and below. And exactly. sometimes I'll just ask whatever color that needs to come through for me and that purpose for the time and moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, just to serve me for the purpose of the day. I guess that would be the key, the key um, explanation. The energies come from below, and the energies come from above. And Francine doesn't even use words for that. It just comes naturally just by feeling the energy. So if you are only, your attention is only up, then you lose the grounding. So you have to Mixing, connect, yeah. grab some energies from above, grab, grab some energies from below, and you're in the middle to connect them. It's intention and acceptance. Yes. Mm-hmm. The heart chakra is right in the center between those two things. Everything comes there, so it's yeah. many pardons. Just just to add in that, um, I've been noticing that pulling, allowing the flow of energy to come in from the left side of the body and the right side of the body to mix in with the up and down, and allowing it to swirl. And what I do is I just allow myself to sit in whatever shapes, colors, explosions. When I feel an explosion, I tell myself the reverse. I'm I'm just coming back to one oneness, yeah. and I do whatever I I do whatever I feel intuitively to allow that happen in the most gentle but strongest allowances for myself. And now it's just a matter of like whatever I feel will keep my balance and perpetual balance, conscious perpetual balance, ever expanding. It really is assisted. Right. Here is an image for you. Uh, energies from above, energies from below, making the yin and yang vortex. And he's talking about bringing in from the side as well. 
Yeah, I feel like connecting through all my chakras going from up to the ground and from ground up sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that is that grounding though. Um, I didn't hear what you said exactly. I feel then he comes from here. Yes. And it goes down here and goes from down there to up here and out. I'm yeah. feeling the message yeah. of what are you some of us are intuitively turning ourselves inside out. We're we're grounding we're pulling in the forty energies from from the earth and then that's just gradually building up in ourselves to in our in our in our, in our individual selves so as to give us the idea of you know how much of a three to four dimensional being is comfortable for us in the three D realm. Right. Um, so we can be, you know, a 4D being, but I'm working with the idea, okay, I'm in a 3D realm, but I'm an infinite being that's learning how to be just pure light, crystalline light, in a physical form that looks right. flesh. You have, remember, flesh. you have to remember, though, you were born into the third dimension, and I know you know that, and the third dimension has to be realized and accepted before you can do anything higher. So you have already realized your third dimension, understand the body, the earth and things, and now are pulling yourself out of that dimension. But you understand that whenever you get to the fourth dimension, there is information that has to come back to the third dimension. And to be able to do that, you have to ground, because otherwise we won't understand what you're talking about if, you're, if you don't ground when you're communicating. So. Uh, that's that's a big part of the message, and I can tell that you're very fourth dimensional and have much knowledge from a higher dimensions. So, but sometimes you go over our heads a little bit because you move off of the ground just enough that it goes right over our heads. So, my only thing with you is I know that you're very highly spiritual and very very highly connected. Just remember us on the earth here. <laughs> Uh, remember us. Remember to ground yourself a little bit more sometimes, so it doesn't the message doesn't go over the head. Because I, I know it does for me every now and then. So, but I, I, feel, I feel it's I feel it's getting I feel I'm getting closer. I feel, yeah. I feel like it's 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 right there. I feel like I have it in my grasp, but I don't need to put my hand on it anymore. Maybe just put my hands to. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you. Um, and uh, because I want your message the higher message to come through the way that it should and sometimes it goes over our head a little bit so because you're so f the fourth dimension wasn't connecting to the third because that's the only way it will uh, help us to uh, understand do you know what I mean it, it the grounding makes yes, yes I'm, I'm, I'm getting your I'm, yes. I'm getting your visual I'm getting your visual and I'm getting guidance as to like where, where you put your hand, they're they're guiding it down to my throat. Wonder. They want it to like be. They're saying what you're 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 exactly putting in the words what they're showing me. Pardon. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, Thank I'm you. Share my uh, my way of uh, grounding. It's more more like connecting higher energies and uh, physical environment. I basically I use hands a lot. It's very natural for me to use hands. So Reiki. Even before doing Reiki, I was using hands. I would feel the area around. If I ask a question, I would I would look, I would put, uh, do that gesture and try to receive the answer through the hand. And I would feel the ground just, just like that. And I would move my fingers to kind of interact with, with the energies around. So that is communicating with the trees, communicating with the, you know, Area with energies within the room, communicating with the energies with people. I guess I spook a lot of people by doing that, but, <laughs> but I kind of am just looking at them, smiling, and continue doing, and you know, the, or or just pretend I didn't do that before, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that helps helps you know connecting. These energies are not physical; they are not three D energies. They are not even measured by electronics devices. It is non physical energies closest to us. It's in the same space, but it is not electromagnetic. It is electromagnetic, maybe. It's etheric. It is etheric. It's electromagnetic. It's Bashar's term. Electro 
magnetic etheric, so electromagnetic energy. So you can feel it, and this way you connect your other dimensional to the environment and surroundings. So that's my take. Okay. Uh, there is a yeah. Huge wow. That's right. strong energy, Max. Brother Max. Max. That's a very strong energy you're working with. Thank you. Thank you for the gift. Sabrina, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I actually had a, a conversation with the tree once. Yes. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, when you use all your senses, when you're in nature, you know, your eyes, you smell the leaves, the, the trees, the flowers, when you touch the ground, and, and all of this grounds you because it connects you back to nature, you become aware of where you're living, and why you are here, um, and and I think much wisdom can be gotten right. from connecting back to, to nature and the earth, and <clears throat> learning to love it again, and knowing that <clears throat> she is not separate from us. Right, that's the most grounding thing: is the nature, the the connection to earth, the connection to third dimensional realities and um, bringing yourself actually it's not bringing yourself down but it is connecting to the essential base basic part of who you are exactly you're connecting to your foundation so and it's a beautiful thing and uh, then you move to the, from the basic to the sexuality and up up through the chakras but those lower chakras as they're called lower chakras are very important to third dimension. The first three are so important to uh, mm -hmm. third dimensional mm -hmm. existence. So to ex you have to really experience and understand all three of those first three chakras to to be third dimensional, you know. And then you can move up. Just don't lose track of where you were. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So that's the best way I can okay. say it. Another thing is uh, burning incense. <laughs> it is. Uh, uh, this is called uh, uh, kaifi. Can you see it? It's uh, Egyptian kaifi. It's uh, made of raisins, uh, honey, frankincense, myrrh, and many other things. And uh, it was used, in, I think it's come from Atlantis. <coughs> it's a very ancient recipe. It was found in ancient Egyptian uh, uh, stellas, hieroglyphs, writings. And um, the tradition came alive here. They burned in the morning they burned frankincense in their churches and in the at night they burned uh, kaifi. So uh, he, this also connects um, connects uh, higher vibrations and very earthy vibrations. It's a very earthy incense. Basically it uses uh, very natural things like frankincense is uh, sap from, from a tree. So it, it is it connects you to the trees through the vibration of the trees. It connects you to honey and raisins and myrrh, which is also a sap from the tree. So this allows you to connect things and ground yourself into into the wood. I also wanted to mention working with uh, with tools like uh, working woodworking is is so grounding and so elevating. At the same time, you you connect to that thing and also you're very creative and allows you to yeah. and the creative part is what's really connecting because those lower chakras are in charge of connecting and creating and things of that nature. And I wanted to mention it. I always preached uh, washing dishes is very grounding. Washing <laughs> dishes is the best meditation that grounds you. You know, if you feel disconnected, <laughs> go wash dishes. Or if you don't have enough dirty dishes, just go wash something. Washing is very. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that makes sense because oh. third-dimensional and, and a very ancient third-dimensional thing. Everybody washed from the beginning of time, so yeah, yeah. washing is wonderful. Cleansing—it's a, a cleansing thing. So cooking is very good. Yeah. <laughs> creative thing, I avoid that one though, Max, as much yeah. as I can. But it's creative <laughs> and it's very creative and. Um, it gratifies other people. It's really good. So, it's giving. Yes, and and children are also very grounding. Yes, 
<laughs> yes. Children are very grounding, yes. Yeah, sometimes just too grounding. <laughs> <laughs> and also dogs and cats. And stuff. Oh, yes, animals, pets, very, very well. Bring, bring your dog there. Bring your dog to the colonies. No, I mean Max dogs. <laughs> oh, here? Okay. Yes. Also, Jim and I, we go to Reiki share. And when you do healing, I mean, yesterday we were there, it's just so healing to ourselves. I did a little bit, I did a lot of healing on others, and I felt healed just by yes. healing others. Yes, serving. Yes, the energy comes through you when you do Reiki, and you get a healing as well. So it's... It's really good. And you just come to the room, you put your hands on the head of anyone, like that, and you feel the energy flow through the hands. It just connects you to other people. And, it, and you become one with other people in many ways. And they always, people that never had Reiki before were there at the YMCA yesterday. Yeah. And they were going, hey, I'm coming back. Was it at Maplewood? Yeah. Yeah, I think I saw it. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm coming back because that was really. I don't know what you did, but it felt really great, and I'm going to, I want to I want to do that again, so. Yeah, so we have wonderful people who organize things for, on, in public places. It's like in uh, medical places, in uh, cultural centers, and now in uh, sports center, YMCA. Every month we, we come there, and uh, some, someone organizes, Gary organizes it, and yeah. a lot of new people come you and know. learn it. <laughs> yeah. And and there there is one thing which uh, is very grounding is uh, massage of the foot feet, feet, foot massage, and uh, I do that. Jim does it, and uh, there are other people who do that. It's just uh, that's what Jesus Christ did, right? He washed your feet, yes. Yeah, and, uh, and she it, she washed his. So. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very um, physical way of uh, spiritual communication. How about that? It it symbolizes that you're a servant. And that you that you were you were serving them by cleaning their feet there, by but the thing about washing the, the feet and doing the feet at the uh, Reiki thing it makes everybody feel so good. When he, I don't, there's few there's a few people out there that don't like their feet rubbed, but most of the people love their feet rubbed, and it puts them in a different state of mind. It puts them in a very positive place. It's also hitting all those reflexology points on the bottom of the feet. It's making the whole body feel good, and it just feels terrific. I, I moan and groan. Uh, if, if, you weren't, <laughs> if there was no visual, you would think something else is going on. But Because um, I'm like, oh, that's so good. Oh. But anyway. Um, Once Lakesh was there, Lakesh came into Jim's body. So Lakesh got a foot massage. And <laughs> what did Lakesh say? Oh, he loved it. In fact, he tried to come back every time I had a foot massage, but I didn't. I said, "No, you just can't do that every time." Just can't. <laughs> I want to enjoy it too. <laughs> yeah, really. So. Oh, did you did you get one? Oh, you visited, but yeah. Oh, before, next time. Yes. When we visit you. <laughs> Yes, when you both come over. That would be cool. We, She's having a get-together for you colo people at her house next year. So people from all over the world are going to be coming to her house. Wow. Hope it's a big house. Yeah, it is. <laughs> she said, yes. She said we'll put up tents and it'll be like a, like a campground there. No, there's enough rooms. Okay. Enough so. rooms. How many rooms do you have? For me and dogs. No, no. I'm traveling with my, my family. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll find a campground nearby. Yeah. So it's a very cool thing. Um, I, I'm looking forward to that. Actually, there is a big shed. <laughs> oh, yes. Sleep right. with the tools. Yes. There's, there's a huge shed. I know. I mean, big. <laughs> All right, we'll discuss that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, well. All right, I think we should wrap it up. Right, on Monday, we have a um, get-together in the same place, uh, 10 a.m., same time, uh, with... Um, Jamie and Misty. Yeah. Physically present ladies, yes. Yeah. We, we were with them in the past, in the past and uh, they ask wonderful questions. It's a pleasure to answer their questions. 
And also Ma very Max, most people don't know what that's about. Can you talk a little bit about it? Oh, oh I already ahead. said that. Uh, nice, physically present ladies. But what is it about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever questions they ask. It's like an interview. They, they ask us questions. Okay, so it's an interview. They are uh, part of the Saint... How do you say that word? Saint Sunk uh, journal. They have a, their own... Um, oh, Saint Shoot. Saint Shoot. Shoot. Yes. They're journalists, so and they're starting an online magazine, and we will be featured in their first uh, magazine. So they're all okay. so okay. And they're very educated, loving, and wonderful, and um, you'll like them a lot. I've, you've seen Jamie before. Yeah, we have video. Ja Jamie's been on before. Okay. And anybody, you're welcome. Uh -oh. Monday too. Okay. Yeah. Any. Any visitors are allowed. We allow them. Mikhail, Hello. speak about Ukraine. Yeah, the, the name is Zenzuk. Zenzuk, yeah. All right. Yes. yes. And I, 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 I can never pronounce it right. Zenzuk. Yeah, Fantishak is there. I think he wants to say hi. Yes, uh, I wanted to agree to you, and uh, I still have a question on my mind from uh, what I was listening to. Uh, how uh, I cannot imagine uh, how could you perceive uh, anything, you know, change uh, in 3D. What is what is 3D? Because for me, you know, there are three dimensions of space, but if they're not moving, I'm not moving. <laughs> so. Well, not, yeah, you can be in fourth dimension all the time when you're by yourself. Um, the most important thing is being. You have to be in third dimension when you're with when you're with the others, so they can understand what you're talking about. Because a lot of times, fourth dimension takes away your your third dimensional communication skills. Does that make sense to you? It's like you're communicating on a whole different level up here than you are down here. But you have to connect them and that's what the grounding does. It connects both of those so that you can speak from fourth dimension to third dimension and they can understand you because there's messages that we need from fourth dimension. But if you speak to the us in fourth dimensional talk, we won't understand them because we're third dimensional, a lot of us. All right. uh, let me clear it up. It's, so just uh, the definitions are different. Um, so. Yes, it makes sense if you know the definition. So the definitions are what Franz Schubert speaks about is measurement dimensions. When we can measure uh, three axes, right, left, back, forward, uh, up and down, and time. It has four measurement dimensions. And it has very little to do with dimension in a different way, which is reality. So third dimension is reality it has nothing to do with three measurement dimensions and time. So we have Four measurement dimensions, okay? And it is yes, one. So tell me how, how can I imagine three dimensional reality? Because oh, I, oh, I can. Not three dimensional in measurements, it's just the name. Third dimension is our dimension. They just count it because they call it four dimension and our dimension third, and it has, it has uh, very little to do with measurement. It just. So one word is. Uh, measurement dimension, another word is reality dimension. And these are two different things not related to each other yes, at all. But it still does not mean anything to me, you know, reality dimension. What is it? You oh, know, reality where, how can I, in, how yes. can I imagine yeah. one, one dimension of reality or two dimensions of reality or oh, three? No. Yeah, explain to me, please, on the yes, simple. Yes, yes. <laughs> you cannot simple imagine uh, one dimension reality and two dimension reality. But you can imagine their world and our world are different. So our world is where we are here, and we cannot penetrate the veil there, not easily can penetrate the veil, veil there. They cannot walk in a different parallel reality where they have little different laws of physics. And you know, these aliens, Pleiadians, and so on, they are there, and we are here. And they just call us number three and them number four, or some of them call us number three and them number five, and some of them call us number four and them number six. It's different numbers which don't count anything. It just, it just, uh, just a, just a name. It's, it's not, 
counts yeah. in a certain way. We are number third dimension. Or so it's third still, dimension. still a that doesn't make sense to me at all. Say again? <laughs> It still, it's, it's still labeled then, uh, three-dimensional yes, reality. Yes, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me at uh, all. It just doesn't mean anything to me. It's, yeah, it's just a label of a different kind of uh, an existence. Third-dimensional existence exists in 3D, and we experience it without the fourth-dimensional. But when you bring the fourth dimension into it, how? it changes how you see the third dimension as well. So that yeah, well, yeah. I'll stop you right there because you said we experience we uh, experience three dimensions without four dimension. So how do you do that? How do you experience three dimensions without time, without perception, yeah. without change, you, without continuity? You know. No, no. Third you, dimension. You need to have time as a fourth dimension to perceive something. You know. Right. Exactly. So, Third dimension reality contains time and three measurement dimensions. Yeah, it just, just contains all those things. Poor naming. I mean, word dimension confused. Yeah. In Russian, this would be two different words, and you wouldn't be confused. It's just English confuses the things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's English. <laughs> that's English. Uh, yeah, third dimension has all those Lots things. Lots of meanings. Mentioned. Yeah, <laughs> has all those things in it. It has time. It has uh, conversation. It has everything that you mentioned in there is in the third dimension. But in the fourth dimension, it changes a little because you're getting different information there. Does that make sense? Let's call, okay. third, dimen let's call third dimension our but, reality and fourth dimension alien. And then everything is fixed. I mean, if you don't use the word dimension, use just reality, then, then it becomes very clear. Our reality, alien reality. So when we're talking about bringing alien reality here, then miracles happen. You get telepathy, psychic abilities, energy, healing, and all of that. So you don't have to use the world dimension at all. The dimension confuses. Yeah. It just. What, but the way I, I perceive it, you know, te telepathy and all of that you mentioned exist existed in the reality I was born to, even before I was born to it. You know. Correct. So you basically were born into alien reality and live here barely, and. Um, some of us are more like from this reality, and they are, for us, it's... Uh, what is your reality then? I don't understand it, you know. I oh. don't I don't get, you know, what do, what do I see, what do you not see then, if you say this? Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's seeing you third you You're third dimensional in the sense that you you know what third dimension is about. It has uh, physicality, it has sexuality, it has nature, it has love. Those are all things in the third dim dimension that also exist in the fourth dimension, except it's in a different density. So that's all. All right, let, let, let me explain another way. So mainstream materialistic world refuses anything supernatural. They say there is only life here, no life after death. Uh, there is no mystic, no, no miracles, no energy. Everything is measured by physics. And it is electromagnetic, it is materialistic, it is something that you can touch. If you can attach it, it doesn't exist. That's uh, uh, very, this reality, materialistic thinking, which you can, which is also called, quote-unquote, third-dimensional. It has nothing to do with measurement. Newton uh, physics, but uh, over more than 15 ye 50 years, we believe that uh, E equals MC squared, which means that everything is energy. Yeah, yeah. So yes. that, that's uh, what was before that. Before that, it's like beginning of 20th century. That's the main idea of yes. of third dimensional thinking. Yes. Everything is energy. If you break any molecule in any person, place, thing, stone, wall, there's energy inside of it. We are a light has formed a matter around energy. Uh, every molecule has energy in it. Every single molecule. So we are all made of energy. Everything's made of energy. Everything. Frantishak? Yeah. Um, for me, the, what distinguishes third dimension from fourth dimension is that in fourth dimension, I mean third dimension, we have the linear time and we have time. In fourth dimension time, it's a little bit more pliable. It's, it, you can play with it more. Now, if you were born doing that, playing with time and able to do that, um, 
you you started at a different spot. Didn't we all do, do that in our imagination? Imagining to be someone else, somewhere else, uh, in some other time. We yeah, did that as kids, right? We but did that as kids, but the problem is that we're all told that that's just your, simply your imagination and to discount all of that. Do you see the difference? So people created this, um, if you want to call it artificial wall, within yeah. their reality. So, so it, what you're saying is that you are not born to this, what you call 3D, we were taught to be in 3D. That's a simple, um, that's a simple, um, relatable explanation for yourself. Sort right, of, Chef, yeah, because right you you are shifting. Obviously, you are changing from here to there, but we're not aware of it. So, so there's that veil there that it's that it's put in front of you, and and it limits you. So, so the more it limits you, the more you get. You're not flexible with with time. With 4D, it's more pliable. Um, may I speak? <coughs> sure. So, um, one second. I, we have to go though. You oh, okay. Can continue to your conversation, but we, I have to leave. I have something coming up, and uh, Francine has to leave as well. Mm. So, um, oh. so continue your conversation. I wish I would, could stay for it all, but I can't. So we oh, have okay. a great day. So well, have you. a great day, Jim. Oh, Namaste. So Bye, much. Jim. Bye. Nice meeting, everyone. Nice. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye, Francine. Uh, we very much appreciated you coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Well, Thank Mary, you leaving as well? You. I'll stay. If you oh, like. Okay. So Sarah, you were saying? Yes, I, I was thinking about this idea that Sabrina put forth and that you put forth as well, Crafty Shack. Um, this idea of the veil or limitations that had been given to us even though we were born in a different mindset. And you are both right. <laughs> this yeah. idea of the 3D exactly. world um, that has been handed to us uh, it makes it seem real and yet it is unreal as you say because we were born in a scope and in ideas that we are so much more for and we knew it as children we knew it and, mm -hmm. and, and the adults were like oh this doesn't exist but we still knew the truth this is why we're here we understand yeah. that it's all just pure energy yeah. We wow. understand that it has nothing to do with this dimension or that dimension. We can move up if we decide that that's exactly what we want. Um, those, those dimensional qualities have been given to us as stepping stones, really. But yeah. if they exist for us, then they exist. And if they don't exist for us, hey. <laughs> we can automatically just start playing with time. So, <laughs> I think right uh, Prantishak, uh, like all of us, you know, you are born into 3D reality, but you have chosen to um, focus and put more uh, attention to your 4D reality. There's That's nothing wrong with that. No, no. no. He's saying there's that nothing the wrong with that. We all, we all do that. So what he's saying is the, three, the idea of the levels of 3D, 4D, 5D, they don't actually exist. That's what he's saying. Yeah. But as yeah, long as you are right. in physical body, you yes, are. and your physical body is 4D. It has three dimensions of space, one dimension of time. So what else, what else it could be 3D, you know, density. So uh, let's say your your body is uh, dense as a third density, and then you see it, you know, then you can touch it. And if it's if it's even denser, 
then then what you know you can touch it as well you know what's what's the difference i didn't i didn't ever experience any change in that you know so i'm not i'm not switching from one uh, reality to to another in in a sense of dimensions or or densities you know i'm just becoming more aware of of what i've always been you know within my imagination mhm mm does it make see, sense? He, the step, he doesn't need the stepping stones is what he's saying. He's understanding himself as just, just pure energy. And energy moves and flows without any limitations. Yeah, that's that's not what I'm saying, but that's true as well. What I mean is, is that uh, we just uh, put labels around everything. But if you are explaining this to a three-year-old kid, wouldn't understand at all what you mean, you know. So mm -hmm. w what you can say him uh, is is you know you can experience this, that, and that, and uh, it's all just uh, another different experiences, you know. There's no there's no dimensions or or densities in it, you know, for for us, you know. <laughs> we just label something that someone that everyone else imagines. And if there's something else under, you know, we we use terms that that don't mean to different people different things, you know, and and then how can we, you know, <laughs> unite in in our thinking when when we just, uh, you know, uh, uh, put out terms that some agree with, some says some says, but you were. Uh, this worked like that before, and uh, this must work like this before. But for whom, you know? There exactly. were always people that were different, you know. Always, all the times. I would say that people understand each other pretty well. I guess when we meet together and we discuss things, we develop common terms and we understand things pretty, pretty similarly. Yeah, you know, I grew up in a Christian uh, groups, different churches, and uh, we call this call the language that we use uh, Christian. Let's check check word. You know, like it's it's not a, a real language. It's artificial. It it works just in a closed group, but uh -huh. it uh, it does not mean anything to to others. You know, so why why to use it? Uh, I guess it is uh, communication is a very important experience for uh, for us. It's uh, it's that's why the the most the main reason for us to be here to, to communicate. Yeah, so why don't we use terms that make sense to everyone? Uh, I guess it is a choice. Uh, you know, I, I'm worried more about standardization. Everybody is so standard standardized that there is no individuality. So I. I'm worried about worry more about uh, being people being brainwashed than people being different. Actually, like no, no, no. uh, think uh, That's what I mean, you know. I mean, uh, I mean uh, unifying in the sense to have understanding what we mean by words. You know, that's that's the only thing. You know, there unify because then you know I I can uh, I was channeling uh, today in Czech. And there was a Christian uh, guy, and he he thought we were death worshippers, and he based based that uh, his his assumptions on what I I don't know what you know, but he because that was mentioned in in the channeling, he automatically thought you know death worshippers. <laughs> that, that's that's uh, misleading you know, like yeah. uh, we are. Uh, we don't pay attention to what we say, what, what we speak about. We just say it because we are thought, uh, l learned to do it that way. But uh, outside, it, it can, you know, but we uh, unconsciously know that, that it causes different reactions, different emotions, different mm -hmm. connections. Yeah. And it also causes separation. Yeah, but the thing is, at the end of the day, even when you have the same definition, you're still not going to view it the same. So, if if we agree that apples are are red, 
right? We can all agree to that before we start a conversation and then we move on from there. But yeah. even there, we're still going to see the apple differently. Yeah. So, well, so at the end of the yeah, day, like, we will have our own perspective on on what it is that we're seeing. Yeah. Well, Sabrina, in your instance, to to uh, agree, you know, how, uh, right. what is the color of apples? Right. And, uh, yeah, and we didn't uh, didn't get agreement. We just said, you know, it's a term that me that uh, means, you know, this and this and this for someone. But uh, it, it I cannot imagine anything underneath under it under those different experiences. Sabrina, using uh, your same analogy about the apples, there's one group who may agree that the apples are red, and then another group says. They're red and green and right. yellow. Right. Because so, or or they have only seen green apples and exactly. they, say, they say you it's are wrong. green. You are wrong. <laughs> yeah, they'll tell you you are wrong. Exactly. I have only seen green apples. So right. They but then you have the third person who says they're red, they're green, they're yellow, and right. they are all right. Right. That's why I said it's a perspective. It's it's all on how you have seen and what you have been exposed to and how you have viewed life from the very beginning. Exactly. And but how you have been conditioned within that life. Right. So this is what I'm getting is we are born, we have certain ideas, we come with those ideas that we are all. And then we are taught certain limitations <laughs> and then we have to put labels on those limitations to say this is this and that is that. Well, mm -hmm. when you say this is 3D, this is 4D, when you look at it in that perspective, you also have the idea of separating yourselves from the others who have a different mindset. And so if you understand that we were actually we, we are actually brought here being all of these things because we are energy and those limitation has been set on us when you put the label you say yes that limitation exists yeah and it just may not exist it's just a thought it's a limitation put you know given to us so we can understand an idea but um, in truth, it just may may just be a label. It's just a label. <laughs> but that label causes separation from those who are who consider themselves in the 4D atmosphere, a range of uh, knowledge and ideas and circumstances, to those who are 3D or considered 3D, um, and those ideas, knowledge, and circumstances. So. We need to find a balance and understanding that we are all one instead of separating ourselves. Okay, those people are 3D and we are 4D. Yeah. There is no separation. Yeah, yeah but if, if, if the other person has been living always within um, the 3D mindset, you can't go to them and try to explain all of these 4D thoughts and ideas because they're not going, not even want to go with you there. So I understand that. that right now, right now, we are, we are like, it's for us, it's actually a special situation because we are 3D, 4D because we have to merge these two ideas together. Do you see what I'm saying? So that so that we explain what 4D is to 3D people, but we also got to stick. We have to stay connected with both sides or both ideas. However you wish to look at it, you know that is that is that is your perspective. But the the uh, the connection or or the bridging has to be uh, created. Uh, there, otherwise you won't be able to reach others. And you are right with the connection in the bridge. Um, it's necessary. But for those who have 
move beyond the label, the label itself, the 3D world, the 4D world, the 5D world. Those labels are no longer necessary for those entities or beings. And so um, it, it's just another stepping stone. That's all. Everyone is right. Yeah. I cannot imagine though what is the 3D mindset. You know, I have I have uh, guys from streets here. Uh, here is <laughs> here is one. His name is oh, Raja. No. He's uh, 60. And uh, uh, would you say he's uh, he's 3D or he, uh, he has 3D mindset? What, how would you discuss, uh, how would you judge that you know how would you say who's 3D and who is 4D? I see him as simple love existence choosing to exist in this fabric of space with the rest of us in this <laughs> and this is how he's choosing to <coughs> express himself through ourselves through himself you always have to Kind of simple. Yes. All is love. All is energy. Just different. Ex just dip like if we were all just honest with what we wanted to do, yeah. then we simple, could do Simple guy, you know, but uh, <laughs> it, there's no difference between us, you know. We are. We're all uh, looking for yeah, love. We are we're different born into totally different life. times, but uh, we experience, we, we share, share similar experiences, you know. Yes. People just don't talk about it, but we, all of us experience it, you know. Even our grandmoms and granddaddies. Go. <laughs> yes. Thank you for this impartation. It's very expanding. I love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So are we ready to go Hi. offline? Oh, Justin, go ahead. Or um, Hi Nitrous. I finally got in. Yay. <laughs> I asked you questions for you, so watch the webinar, okay? Okay. Hopefully my internet won't disconnect on me. Mm hmm Okay. Very good. Um, do we wish to go off live now? Everyone? It's Max who has to do it, if he's online or not. Yes, I know. Yeah. We have to tell Max. Well, he's, he's just letting us talk, so mm -hmm. let's not worry about it. <laughs> he's <laughs> just going to make some meditation yeah. or stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyone has anything else to say? Or should we start a new hangout so we can go offline? Well, I have a question for all of you. Um, mm -hmm. throughout, your, throughout your lifetimes, um, have you ever noticed things working out in your life unexpectedly? Yes. <laughs> Definitely. It happens all the time. Yeah, exactly. After, re after realizing that you create your reality. Yes. One and minute. before. <laughs> yes. Do you have anything else to add to the question, Pegasus? No. Oh, okay. Anyone else? No. No? Okay, should yeah, we close this one? Idea is it can be. 
I had an idea with 3D and 4D that it can be just the other way around than we say it, you know, because 4D is four dimensions of, you know, uh, uh, with time. Mm -hmm. But what we are stopping to perceive is time, you know. We are, you know, we see every moment here. So we're becoming more and more 3D in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, idea, the idea is, is like, Maybe maybe source is tired of being source. It's like, hey, whoever's willing to trade up, you know, the emotion. I don't think source is tired of being source though. Just <laughs> well, 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 my source is tired of keeping track of my ass and keeping me, my ass safe. You know, yeah, go go sure. set up, go, go go back up and because sit in the crystal, this would and and and, right. and I'll come enjoy Earth the way you, I've told you to, and I'll make it happen for us. Wait a minute, Justin, Justin, Source loves us no matter what we do. Exactly. <laughs> Aren't we all remnants of Source? Yes, we are. We are all this is what my source. source. And this is what my Source is calling for in this moment, and it's working out beautifully. It mm -hmm. really is. It doesn't look like it, but I'm getting comfortable with it because it's like this is how Source wants to live. If this is how Source wants to live, like... I've been comfortable with it for a while, so just bring what needs to happen happen so I can expand upon this because I know this isn't it. I know this is the beginning now. I truly understand that since I got to the point that I've gotten to, it's just going to be the beginning and just expand from there. Mm -hmm. And here comes the blue ray. And so oh, many... <laughs> we have an infinite being in 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 this collective co-created moment. Yes. This moment is a part of the infinite being. Does anyone want to be an infinite? We are all infinite. <laughs> Exactly, but who would love to stay in this body for, not forever, but for a while to enjoy what their life truly is and simply is? I would love to just do keep on doing what I'm doing. However, it's not working in the fact where, you know, I've <clears throat> it's, weighing on my, it's weighing on my mind and stuff that, you know, others have been assisting me and I haven't been able to support and the energy known as money. And I have everything else to offer, but it's not necessarily being, it's, it's being received, but I just know that if it was received with this... Hey, who is this, this new guy? Brother Luxor, Luxor Bear. Yes. Hello? <laughs> Hello, Bear. So, Brother Bear? Oh, he might be getting his headset on or something or away from his... Laptop or computer. Um, Justin, <clears throat> are you talking about a walk-in? A walk-in. Yes, we're basically souls uh, trade uh, trade places. Like, say, like your soul exits your body, and, th and another soul goes in your body and experiences what you experience. Is that what you were talking about? Um, I'm getting the answer of. What simply would be yes to to make it relatable for you. However, I've chosen my purest fractal of source and whatever idea that means to be, and whatever it builds to be, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. Now that I'm comfortable with just being one simple 
fractal of being that is understanding. I understand that I'm an individual. However, I'm an individual that's made up of collect a collective idea of what this individual is to be. And this, and I'm understanding the way I live my life is co is comfortable and beneficial to the collective. However, it is, it is. My existence, I'm understanding, is is assisting the transition, the shift, whatever I'm doing <laughs> in the simplest ways. And I have no issues being honest. It's just some people's boundaries might be like, wow, how is it that, you know, it's just there's just new ways to finding your idea of, of your higher power, your higher source, what, what gives you strength when you need, you know, God-like strengths, if you will, you know, when you, when you feel like you need to, you know, break a boundary, but, you know, it's like, man, you, you've been told your whole life you can't, well, what are going to be the consequences of that action, okay, if I do it out of this, if I do it with this intent, well, if we finally get in the alignment, of just living from the heart and just I'm almost to the point of just ready to just talk in expressions of just pure love just how are you I'm love how was your day loving how was your moment fucking loving and amazing you know no matter what I'm getting to a point that no matter what goes on around me it just automatically just gets pulled up in and and charged into white light and wherever it came from it goes it goes back to and it goes back as pure love but we since we all, that's all I see. Um, Max to if someone could call Max to get the call off there. Oh, like ask ask Max to take it off off live air. Yeah. I'll hit him up on Skype real quick. Mm -hmm. I got him. Okay. Hello there. Can you hear us, Brother Bear? My blue star cancer, the love cancer. Where you at? What if we change the name of cancer to love? <laughs> seriously, like seriously, simply. What if everyone just started? What if we all just got to the idea of like, if if someone says it like, oh, you're talking about love. Oh yeah, that person's dying of love right now. I don't know whoever whoever they're giving it to. They're giving a lot of themselves to it, but you know. You should change it to infinite love. Yes. <laughs> Yes, because that's what I'm feeling. I'm literally feeling I had things attached to that I gave these experiences just out of pure love and return for love and understanding, and I received the healing. Mm -hmm. So I give up the feelings, those, especially the ones that are uncomfortable, you know, because sometimes expansion can be painful. It can, but we all have our different ways of um, making the expansion a little more comfortable. And and it's just find our it's just find our own ways to you know get comfortable with it. And then after getting comfortable, you're just like all right. I really do I need this tool anymore? Yes or no? Is it beneficial to me? Is it is it affecting my outside universe? And my simple truths are like at times, yes it does. At this moment, it's it's not, you know. And that feels way better than, you know, the other feelings did. And now I'm at a point where I've completely shifted where, you know, I don't look at time, I don't look at like directions, I you know, I just do what I can to keep simply keep my what I understand what my balance is, you know, what my so I can keep my directionality and my path. And it's it doesn't look like it 
to a lot of the perceivable universe, you know, but when the people that haven't seen me, you know, that are just like, wow, you just popped out of nowhere and you look like just everyone, you look different. And one of the things I've been getting for the last like two or three years is this like, man, when did you look, when did you turn into Jesus Christ? When did you look, when did you start looking like Jesus? Like, like this started happening about like three years ago. And it's just been really interesting the places that like this has come up. And, and it's really funny because it's like I, I found my, my individual higher power while just sitting in a forced vacation, if you will, um, because of what my choices were. And it was in this in the moment I was like, wow, wow, it just all hit me, you know, like another awakening, another epiphany. It's just like, and then I found a book on Buddhism, and I found a book on Taoism, I found a book on on um, the Four Agreements, and they all just manifested to me in this place. And then there is another book that says you, um, hold on, I just need to get up for a second. No, I'm back, Sarah. So hello, Sarah. Okay, bro. You can heal your life. It feels like someone else is here with you today. <laughs> is that your wish? Maybe it feels like it's kind of Naga. What's that? You speak a little bit different than you normally does. Mm. You go, mm, and that's usually what Naga does. <laughs> so. I do that sometimes as well. Yeah, I never hear you do it. I only hear Naga do it. <laughs> yeah. And you said, I do it as well. That means that you are Naga now, right? I've always been Naga. <laughs> um, I'm getting a... Pegasus? Uh, Regina, what? Pegasus? Uh, I was saying that I'm getting a feeling it feels like I'm traveling through the universe and passing by different planets as, as I'm oh. staring out my window and looking out the sky. How does this make you feel? Cool. It's sort of expanding. Would you be up into a uh, awesome dude. Into your heart? I look yes. out my window and the night is coming. <laughs> the clouds look very cool. Mm -hmm. When you say the night is coming, uh, Gabriel, do you mean, because um, I know where you are, it's like the number of days of night. And then a number of days of day. So is it that at the moment? Would yeah, I be coming for many days? You see, it's almost completely dark, but it's still light. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of clouds. Well, there is always like light. The night is coming. Mm -hmm. Yes, but will it be night for like a month or so where you are? It'd be many months. Many months, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Sean Winter. Is That's coming. why I want to get to Hawaii <laughs> as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Yes. But should we move to another hangout? So. Yeah, maybe that would be the best bet. I yeah, this recording will be crap because it's so should uh, sh here I'll just I'll just throw out an invite on here yeah. one chat and should I create the hangout or whoever gets to it first um could you guys be sure to send me the link in Google plus yes 
I, I'm right. working. I, I will call you, Sarah. Then we can. I will send the link. All right. Goodbye, everybody on Hukulu TV. We will see you next week. Love you, smooches. <laughs>